Election results are in. Good evening and welcome to NABJ NAHJ News. I'm Deanna Giles. And I'm Jasmine Franklin. Let's get right to tonight's top story. NABJ's Board of Directors for the 2022 to 2024 term have officially been elected into office. Congratulations to Vice President Kathy Cheney, Treasurer Walter Smith Randolph, Parliamentarian Sia Nior, Region 5 Director Terrell Anderson, Academic Representative Dr. Sabir Brown, and Media Related Representative Rashonda Hall. Region 2 Director remains vacant. Now to our other big story of the day. One person is dead following a shooting at the Mirage Hotel. Let's send it over to Claudia Rivero Cotto, who spoke with some people staying at the hotel. Carmen Peña se hospeda en el Hotel Mirage y nos dice llegó a Las Vegas para pasar unos días de vacaciones con sus amigos. Cuando al poco tiempo de llegar se enteró del incidente. Fue muy aterrador pues de saber que había pasado algo de, esa, de ese tipo aquí en el hotel donde nos estamos hospedando. Todo ocurrió a eso de las ocho y media de la noche. Según la policía, las cuatro personas involucradas se encontraban en una habitación del hotel cuando en medio de una discusión, uno de ellos abrió fuego contra dos mujeres y un hombre que murió. Uno entra y hace el check-in normal, pero no hay ninguna seguridad donde uno pueda pasar y detecten algún metal. El sospechoso fue identificado como Billy Hamsley. Este fue arrestado y enfrenta un cargo de asesinato y dos cargos de intento de asesinato. Tras el tiroteo, hablamos con visitantes que dijeron estar preocupados por la seguridad de los hoteles y el strip de Las Vegas. Pues yo creo que filtros no desde el principio. Creo que hace que fue cuatro años que estuvo en el, creo en el Mandala, que hubo un tiroteo ahí en un festival. Entonces creo que desde el inicio de, al ingresar de los hoteles deberían de tener ese filtro no contra armas. Cualquier cosa puede pasar y realmente vinimos a disfrutar y que pasen estas diferentes situaciones es muy... Es muy conmovedor para todos los visitantes. That was Claudia Rivera Coto reporting. And tonight we're hearing new reactions on the charges announced in the death of Breonna Taylor. Four Louisville police officers face federal charges, including uh, civil rights offenses, unconditional use of force, and obstruction. Taylor was killed back in March of 2020 inside of her Louisville, uh, Kentucky apartment. Benjamin Crump says emotions ran high when Taylor's mother heard about the charges from Attorney General Merrick back in, uh, back in March. Only a mother would keep track of the day and the hour from when her daughter was killed. And she told the Attorney General that, and she thanked him for giving, renewing her faith, because she said, you know, you just, you just lose faith. You just lose faith in everything. Um, because Brianna, I mean, that's her firstborn. Wow. Crump, Crump says if convicted, the four police officers could go into prison for life. The heat is something everyone who lives or visits Vegas has experienced. Take a look at these Instagram images of people who live in the shadows. The homeless community in Las Vegas struggles with the heat we've all felt. They also, before we arrived in town, were displaced by heavy rain that forced them to leave tunnels where they used to live. They got help from a man who used to be homeless himself. See what he did for them. Watch the story we posted on the NABJMonitor.com. Now let's get a check of this weather with Christina Norris. It looks like we're gonna be getting some hotter days. Yes, how hot is it gonna be, Christina? Yes, thank you. Well, I can definitely tell you, it is going to get hotter out there. As you can see in the state of Nevada right now, in Las Vegas, we got around the 90s and the 80s. In Las Vegas, we have a 92, and in Boulder City nearby, we have a 93. And that's with no air conditioning, so yeah, definitely getting hotter out there. And as for rain, this week the city of Las Vegas has had some rain, as mentioned earlier, but it hasn't been rain today, or there hasn't been too much rain today, so you are free to walk around without your umbrellas for this evening. And as for our nine-day forecast, yeah, it's going to be at the hundreds and the highest this week 
and at the lowest, the 81. So you can expect a range of 90s and mid 90s. So my advice to you all is please take care of yourselves. Make sure you drink plenty of water, check on your elderly relatives, and if you're feeling tired somewhere, make sure you get a chance to sit down because it is really important and crucial for you to enjoy your weekend. That's it from me, anchors. I'll pass it back to you. Well, thank you, Christina. Definitely need to check on our elders. <laughs> yes, and carry some water with too. It's gonna be really oh, yes. hot. It was a little cool yesterday, but the heat seems like it's gonna be kicking right back in. It's getting up there. All right, so a 2019 report by the UNLV Center for Crime and Justice Policy that shows Nevada ranks ninth in the nation for human trafficking. Our Zakia Jennings is here with a closer look at this disturbing trend. Zakia? That's right, the trend is so disturbing that local airport officials are working hard to combat the problem of sex trafficking from the very moment visitors step off the plane. Many people come to Las Vegas to have fun. However, many more are unaware of the dangers that exist around some of the most popular attractions in Sin City. I think we're all working really, really hard to combat the issue of trafficking. Amy Marie Morell is the executive director of Cupcake Girls. It's a nonprofit in Las Vegas focused on supporting those affected by sex trafficking. Cupcake Girls provides confidential support to people involved in the sex industry, as well as trauma-informed outreach, advocacy, holistic resources, and referral services to provide the prevention after care of those affected by sex trafficking. I was a flight attendant for some time, and I did see a lot of trafficking that would happen in the airports or on planes. According to airport officials, all airport employees are taking a proactive approach in combating sex trafficking. And it all starts with looking for certain behavioral signs. So the signs that we look for are, um, you know, people that have a one-way ticket, people that have a one-way ticket without any kind of baggage. Um, if there's more than one person present with them, it's um, that the other person's not being allowed to speak for themselves or, you know, staying behind them. Um, just things that are kind of out of the norm um, in day-to-day -day traveling. Posters like this provide information for help. They're placed in restrooms throughout Harry Reid International Airport. Uh, human trafficking is an issue um, nationally, internationally, um, and it's something that you know, all modes of hubs of transportation uh, must deal with and you know, find ways to help combat. Um, as we know that lots of people will move through here on a daily basis. With Las Vegas being a big tourist destination, Officials want to ensure that those who come to the Sin City can do so freely and safely. And most importantly, encourage you to do your part. If you see something, say something. It could save a life. Back to you. Thanks, Zakia. And coming up, inflation sweeping across Vegas. Next, we take you to an inside look at a food bank helping families bounce back and a blast from the past. Later, we flash back and reminisce with some NAVJ, NAHJ babies. Can you name any NAVJ or NAHJ founder? Oh, Marilena Salinas, I know from NAHJ. Three, two, Enjoy the ride. Welcome to NBCU Academy. When you challenge the best journalists. Focus is one of the most important things when it comes to writing and storytelling. That the best news organization. Your task is to help people understand what happened. To educate and train journalists. What's the truth? What are the facts? What really matters? And provide access and opportunity to all. Remembering these basics will help make your piece visually interesting. Uh, oh, wow. Um, the future is, uh, what's ahead of us? I don't get it. Yeah. Maybe this will help. So now we're in the present. And now we're in the future. The all-electric Chevy Bolt EUV with available Super Cruise for hands-free driving. Dad? Yeah? Do fish get thirsty? Uh. Find new answers. Find new roads. Chevrolet.
Europe has become the destination for people from Latino America looking for a safety country. Americo Garcia is a Peruvian immigrant that opened a food truck in Germany. Diana Valieras has the more details on the story. In algunos países de Latinoamérica, la inseguridad ha ocasionado que algunos hispanos emigren a Europa. Durante un intercambio en Berlín, tuve el placer de conocer a Américo, un hombre peruano que ahora deleita a decenas de alemanes y turistas de todo el mundo con sus tradicionales platillos peruanos. Cada domingo en el mercado Mauer Park de la ciudad de Berlín, Alemania, la gente viene a buscar la comida peruana de Américo García. Américo llegó a Alemania hace 25 años. Su sueño siempre fue tener un restaurante, algo que por motivos de inseguridad no pudo lograr en su natal Perú. Nunca se imaginó que lo lograría tan lejos de su tierra, en Alemania. Me gusta la tranquilidad, me gusta por ejemplo la seguridad que uno tiene acá. Alemania se ha convertido en el cuarto destino europeo más popular para hispanos, con 267 mil inmigrantes procedentes de los países iberoamericanos, según los datos de la Oficina Federal de Estadística 2019. La inseguridad fue el principal motivo por el que Américo emigró a Europa. No nada seguro, que estar siempre luchando a no salgas ahí porque el barrio no... Emigrar a Alemania no significa dejar a su Perú atrás. Américo lo recuerda en cada platillo que hace, como la causa la limeña, anticuchos y más especialidades peruanas. Américo dice estar feliz de haber encontrado un lugar seguro para emprender y planea quedarse en Berlín para seguir compartiendo su cultura con la gente de Berlín y turistas que visitan esta ciudad diariamente. Aunque Américo se enfrentó a largos papeleos migratorios poniendo a prueba sus planes en Alemania, demostró que los hispanos sí pueden emprender en Europa, incluso en lugares tan lejanos como Berlín. Reportando desde Las Vegas, soy Dayana Villanueva. And right now, food pantries in Las Vegas are seeing a 5 to 15 percent jump in families coming to them for help. The leading cause, inflation. NABJ's Yao Bansu takes you inside one of the area's largest food banks and how families are feeling about higher prices. Here at City Impact Food Bank, families need help more than ever. The increase of just everything, utilities, food, Rent, everything is over, over too much. I have to live with siblings to be able to afford. I know it's just overwhelming because I look at the bills every day. The electric bill is going, it goes up every, every day a lot. It's clear everyone needs a little relief. Here at City Impact, it comes in the form of free food. About 80% of our people, they're underemployed. They're working. They're working two jobs, mom's working, dad's working, or aunt's working, or grandma's working, whoever it is. And so what we're able to do here is offset people's monthly food expenditure, and that changes their life. Lives that include living paycheck to paycheck because of inflation. It's stressing me out. Every day I worry about bills. My electric bill is $500 and it's just past due. City Impact gets up to three shipments a day, sometimes even more. But with more people coming to the pantry, things can get a little rocky. We have a freezer truck that we keep completely full of food. We have uh, two coax uh, Connex boxes out back that I'll show you. And so we stay about two weeks ahead of food. Food that gives families hope. I think this is something amazing that the community definitely needs. And it's awesome that we get to have it in times like the ones we're living in right now. And they've helped me through a lot of things, even homelessness. I want to make sure what I have in my house, you could have in your house. For NABJ, NAHJ News, I'm Yao Bonsu. Often referred to as the most well-known street in Las Vegas, the Strip is busting with people every day and night of the week. But many of the reasons residents and tourists come here vary. Let's turn to Tanya Valieres to find out. Daily, thousands of people from all over the country come to Las Vegas. From the casinos to the nightclubs, some people attend conferences, while others come here to celebrate anything. I am a bachelor only for a short period of time, getting married in a month or so. While some are celebrating their last few moments before saying, I do. Friendships. It's my, my good friend's uh, bachelor weekend. Or just drinking and living life on the edge. Others see Las Vegas as the perfect place to celebrate new life. 
So what are you in Vegas for today? We have a baby moon. <laughs> there is one thing that's inevitable on the strip. Estamos festejando el cumpleaños de mi hijo Jonathan. Families. <laughs> Casi mil dólares ahí. Coming together to the Las Vegas Strip to bond through gambling and trying new foods. In the Hell's Kitchen later. Hell's Kitchen, it was excellent. Fuimos a Hell's Kitchen. Countless people come with the hopes of having the best birthday. Sunday, my beautiful wife's birthday. My birthday. Regardless of what people fly across the nation to the strip for, one thing is certain. Lo que pasa en Las Vegas se queda en Las Vegas. <laughs> sí. From Latino Reporter, I'm Tania Velasquez in Las Vegas. Live look of Las Vegas Strip. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back. There's so many. It's like 40 something of them. And I can't think of the other names, but Les Payne is the biggest one that comes to mind. How about you? Unfortunately, I cannot. <laughs> Sorry about that. But I appreciate all the work that they've done. All of life, destiny stands asking you to make a choice. Who will you be? I will be great. I will be fearless. I will be a dreamer. I choose to be 100. Growing up, sickle cell disease wasn't talked about much, and it was about 10 years ago that things started to change. We gained allies dedicated to raising awareness and making progress. As a nurse, a sickle cell disease warrior, a patient advocate, and a mom, I'm inspired by companies like GBT and the advances they've made who saw the overwhelming need and answered the call. We're very proud of what we've accomplished, but we know that so much more needs to be done. Significant barriers and disparities in care still exist, not just for the sickle cell community, but for the minority community more broadly. Trust isn't a given. It has to be earned. It has to be kept. It's a trek we make in the stories we tell and the balance we strike, the communities we connect, voices we share. We've been on this journey for a long time. Hello, I'm Annika Pergament. You're watching Spectrum News. We're here to illuminate how the national stories impact your local community. Fargo's Minority Banking Initiative, our Diverse Home Ownership Initiative, those long-standing commitments demonstrate Wells Fargo's consistency around helping communities of color. It's so important that we bring people into the formal banking system so that they can be put on a meaningful path towards improving their financial well-being. It is possible to actually make progress and to create a more inclusive, more diverse company that benefits everybody. One year later, name, image, and likeness deals are opening doors for collegiate athletes everywhere. That includes Morgan State University's Kayla Sweezy. She signed multiple NIL deals, including agreements with Facebook and Under Armour. Her advice is to make connections. She hopes her story can make a difference for HBCU student athletes across the country. NABJ celebrated journalists today at the NABJ 2022 Hall of Fame luncheon. The organization honored legendary journalists, including Henry Jr. from West Side Gazette newspaper, Tanya K. Hart from Hollywood Live, and American Urban Radio Network, and Shari D. Boomer from Cleveland 19 News. During the award ceremony, executive director of NABJ, Drew Barry was announced as the surprise Hall of Fame inductee. Some sneaky people in here. <laughs> Dorothy Tucker at the top of the list. My own family. I am speechless. NBC News and MSNBC correspondent Shaquille Brewster and ABC congressional correspondent Rachel Scott hosted today's event. Now to the latest in a series of newscasts in our joint student project. Here's a look back, at, to our, back ahead to our partnership. These are some of the faces of NABJ-NAHJ babies. 
That's ABC News Deputy Political Director Avery Harper working with the student projects in New Orleans about a decade ago. It is exciting to see this, this, this program grow because, again, it provides students with opportunities to connect with professionals in the business, to get some stories on their reel, uh, to get the practice that they really need. Harper and Shaquille Brewster of MSNBC met during NABJ student projects and got their jobs in part because... And that newscast is played in the hotel television. It's played at the career fair on a big screen and executives are walking by, recruiters are walking by, they see you on that screen. So sometimes they know your work. They know the stories you have done before you even have said anything to them. So the NABJ, NAHJ partnership and student pipeline continues to this day. Arizona Republic immigration issues reporter Rafael Carzanza says, my first job was covering the border in South Texas. I was working for a TV station down there, and so I was writing, shooting, and editing all of my pieces, which is something that I also got the chance to do to do the certain projects. Because the program has created a comfortable space for students to learn, they're striving at even the highest of hills, Capitol Hill. That is ABC's News Congressional Correspondent Rachel Scott up in the air during a student project. She coached me through packaging, um, writing even, how things came together. And I cannot even just say how much it meant when I was at that level to have someone who just believed in me. So SOAR, NABJ and NAHJ babies, leave ready to conquer the multimedia world. Two, three. I got this. For NABJ, NAHJ News, I'm Alexis Davis. A new pool rental app makes it easier for people to find a place to take a dip. Oh yes, I was able to visit a pool owner to see how it works. Finding your passion can be a journey, but if your passion is swimming, we have speakers and lighting, pool toys. It just got easier. Bunham Laskin is the CEO of Swimply. An app that allows anybody to find a pool near them. Catherine Jewett started renting out her pool in June. Owners choose their own rules and prices, and swimmers just come to have fun. She offers lights that brighten your experience, outdoor activities, and more for free. We love our backyard, and we've enjoyed watching people enjoy our backyard as well. So it's been fun to share our backyard. Laskin came up with the idea for the app pre-pandemic in 2018. The California native says he and his 11 siblings were stuck in the house with nothing to do for fun. So Laskin, who doesn't have his own pool, started paying his neighbors to rent out their pool. He developed the app, which became a business in 2019 going from neighborhood to neighborhood to neighborhood since, and it's all powered by the neighborhood. Laskin says his app is the only one of its kind. He believes it not only helps those looking for a place to cool off, but helps create a sense of community. Our vision is to match every passion with a space and give people the access that they would want without needing to be part of the 1%. Curly hair and don't care. I know that's right. Well, coming up, how one storybook character defies the odds with her curls. Sandra, Sandra Weaver, Allison Davis, Dwayne Wickham, Mr. Brock, Founder Brock, as he's affectionately called. I'm gonna stand still, but I love them and I appreciate them. I'm so thankful for them, because without them, we would not be here as we are today in ABJ and AHJ. Much love. Thanks to Mr. Craig Newmark for his strong commitment of support to NABJ, community, and country. We appreciate you, Mr. Newmark. At the E.W. Scripps Company, we are creative and courageous. 
telling stories with integrity, and advancing understanding of the world around us. We're creating the future of our industry, taking opportunities where we find them, and creating them where we don't. We're growing our people as we grow our company, seeking the best in ourselves and one another as we improve the lives of those we serve. We help people find their way to trusted journalism. Find your light at Scripps. At the NABJ NAHA Author Showcase, journalists are promoting self-love to children. One of those authors is Casey McGee, who is showcasing her self-appreciation through her book, Curly Girl, My Curls Are Mine to Love. The book's main character is a girl, Bailey, who got bullied during school for her curly hair. But when Bailey sees someone on TV, she begins to love her curls. The author, a former anchor and reporter, hopes this will inspire others. I want them to love themselves, no matter if they have curly hair, straight hair, uh, locks, braids, whatever they have, I want them to show up and be authentic to who they are and love who they are, not, not let anyone uh, try to dim their light or make them feel like they have to change to fit into uh, what's accepted. To buy McGee's book, visit her website, caseyfernan.com, or search on Amazon for it. Thank you for joining us on NABJ NAHJ News. I'm Deanna Giles. And I'm Jasmine Franklin. Stay safe and have a great rest of your night.